Bollywood sure isn't a business for the weak of stomach, heart, or ego, because as much as you'll be celebrated for your successes, you'll also get dogpiled for your failures. Now, these eight filmmakers all learned that firsthand, each losing prominent directing gigs due to prior works that just didn't live up to either critical or commercial expectations. More often the latter than the former, let's be honest. But whatever the case, these filmmakers all end up being kicked to the curb from a promising project due to the state of a previous film they made. So let's take a look at them as I'm Jules, this is WhatCulture.com, and these are eight movies that got Got directors fired from other movies. Number 8. Chappie Got Neil Blomkamp Kicked Off Alien 5 Neil Blomkamp sure has had one of the strangest careers of any young filmmaker. After scoring near-universal acclaim for his 2009 sci-fi action debut District 9, which even netted a Best Picture Oscar nomination and Best Adapted Screenplay nod for Blomkamp, every single film since has been more dubiously received than the last. Blomkamp's follow-up Elysium received good but not great reviews, and the reception to his third film Chappie was more mixed to negative, and his more recently released fourth film, low-budget horror flick Demonic, has been thoroughly panned by most critics. But while doing press for Demonic, Blomkamp stated that his belief that he was fired from Alien 5, which he was hired to direct just a month before Chappie's release, after the franchise godfather Ridley Scott watched Chappie, leading Blomkamp to state, it's possible that Ridley watched Chappie and he was like, this guy can't do Alien, so let's just go ahead and move on. As for whether the director spoke to Scott after the plug got pulled and Scott instead pushed on with Alien Covenant, Blomkamp had nothing but blunt honesty to offer. Not after, no, 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 there's no coming back from that. I'm not going to work on a film for two years and have the rug pulled out from underneath me and then go hang out and have beers. It's exactly why I don't want to do IP based on other people's stuff ever again. As disappointing as the director's post-District 9 career has been, you can't really fault the guy's frustration here. Number 7. The Thing Flopped and Got John Carpenter Fired from Firestarter Though John Carpenter's The Thing can't be thought of anything less than a sci-fi horror masterwork today, the reception was decidedly frostier upon its original 1982 release. The Thing was initially a critical and commercial failure, and in what might be one of the all-time worst Razzie nominations, the dread-infused synth score earned the composer a baffling Worst Musical Score nomination. But while shooting The Thing, Carpenter had already been offered the opportunity to direct an adaptation of Stephen King's novel Firestarter, which he accepted and also brought his Thing screenwriter Bill Lancaster aboard. Yet once The Thing cratered at the box office, barely recouping its $15 million budget, Universal let Carpenter go and replaced him with the on-the-rise director Mark L. Lester. Ultimately, it was a blessing in disguise for Carpenter. Lester's version of the film was a critical and commercial failure, while Carpenter went on to enjoy an incredible run of films throughout the 80s, including Christine, Starman, Big Trouble in Little China, and They Live. Number 6. X-Men Apocalypse's Underperformance Got Brian Singer Fired From Dark Phoenix it truly is fascinating that Brian Singer managed to maintain a successful Hollywood career for as long as he did, despite so many allegations of abuse being leveled against him over the decades. Even when the allegations intensified amidst the release of 2014's Days of Future Past, Fox stood by the director and invited him back to helm 2016's Apocalypse. However, Singer didn't end up returning to direct what would have been the final film in Fox's X-Men franchise, Dark Phoenix. While many speculated that this was due to Singer's increasingly radioactive standing in the industry, Singer was actually dismissed from the sequel due to the critical and commercial underperformance of Apocalypse. Though it's entirely possible, if not likely, that Singer's troubled history made the decision much easier, it was announced mere months after Apocalypse's release that the studio was pressing the reset button, wishing to develop future films with a new filmmaking voice. Sadly, Fox continued to entrust the franchise to wildly hit-and-miss writer Simon Kinberg, and made the additionally ill-informed decision to hire him to direct Dark Phoenix as his filmmaking debut. To the surprise of absolutely no one, Dark Phoenix flamed out in every way that mattered, while Singer's career has been firebombed beyond recognition by a slew of additional sexual abuse allegations. Number 5. The failure of Heaven's Gate prompted producers to fire Michael Cimino from Footloose the late Michael Cimino had one of the most fascinating career trajectories of any filmmaker in history. In 1978, he helmed the Best Picture and Best Director Oscar-winning drama The Deer Hunter, immediately shunting him to the upper echelons of A-list directors. But in 1980, Cimino's career careened into a brick wall when his much-anticipated epic western Heaven's Gate was a historic box office flop and won Cimino the Worst Director Razzie Award. Today, the grandiose failure stands tall as a monument to directorial hubris. One 
which tainted the entirety of Cimino's remaining career. Case in point, he was originally hired to direct 1984's iconic musical drama Footloose, but Paramount got cold feet when the filmmaker requested $250,000 to rewrite the script. With Paramount looking back to Cimino's lavish demands on Heaven's Gate, which caused that film's budget to balloon to untenable levels, producer Daniel Melnick made the decision to fire Cimino and replace him with the less outspoken Herbert Ross. Ultimately, Footloose went on to enjoy huge commercial success, and Melnick said of Cimino's version, it might have been a good film, but it wasn't the film we wanted to make. It wasn't the film we came to the party with. Sadly, Cimino never made another box office hit for the rest of his career. Number 4. Fantastic Four's Trouble Production Got Josh Trank Fired From The Boba Fett Solo Movie on paper, Chronicle director Josh Trank seemed like an inspired choice to helm a gritty reboot of the Fantastic Four franchise for Fox. There was enough industry confidence in his talents that, mere weeks into the film, Trank was also announced to be directing a standalone Star Wars film said to be a Boba Fett solo movie. But before Fantastic Four's release, word got out that Trank's on-set behavior was less than ideal, reportedly damaging his rented accommodation and failing to communicate with studio executives, causing the studio to try and salvage the film with reshoots. As such, several months before Fantastic Four hit screens, it was announced that Trank had exited the Boba Fett movie, or as insiders claimed, he had been let go from the movie by Lucasfilm executives due to his volatile behavior. And it absolutely tracks. Letting a troubled director take charge of a mega-budget movie from one of the world's most valuable IPs would be straight-up fiscally irresponsible. Six years since Trank's firing, the Boba Fett movie never materialized, though the chapters have reappeared on The Mandalorian, and Trank has since only directed the mediocre Al Capone biopic Capone starring Tom Hardy. Number 3. Pan Flopping Got Joe Wright Fired From A Julius Caesar Biopic if you don't remember 2015's Peter Pan origin story Pan, well, don't feel too bad. Despite being directed by the talented Joe Wright and starring Hugh Jackman as Blackbeard while rocking a $150 million budget no less, the film was rinsed by critics and largely ignored by audiences, such that it's almost evaporated from the cultural consciousness entirely. But the wider implication was that Pan ended up derailing the next directing gig that Wright had already lined up. While on the press tour for Pan, Wright had been hired to direct Emperor, a Julius Caesar biopic for Lionsgate, but as soon as Pan's box office figures came through, those talks were abruptly put to an end. Despite several sources corroborating the story, Wright's reps and Emperor's producers naturally denied that a hiring or firing had ever taken place. Regardless, Wright quickly rebounded with the phenomenally successful Oscar-winning Winston Churchill biopic Darkest Hour. All the while, there haven't been any updates on Emperor since 2015. Number 2. The Book of Henry Got Colin Trevorrow Fired From Star Wars Episode 9 in August 2015, it was announced that Jurassic World director Colin Trevorrow was confirmed to be helming Star Wars Episode 9, as would of course later become Rise of Skywalker. However, in September 2017, it was announced that Trevorrow had departed the project amidst the oft-cited creative differences with the film's producer Kathleen Kennedy. But reports soon enough emerged that Trevorrow was ousted due to being a difficult collaborator during pre-production, and that after his previous film, The Book of Henry, was panned earlier that summer by critics, it was the straw that broke the back in convincing Kennedy to fire him. An insider had this to say. When the reviews for Book of Henry came out, there was immediately conjecture that Kathy was going to dump him because they weren't thrilled with working with him anyway. He's a difficult guy. He's really, really, really confident. Let's just call it that. Trevorrow was ultimately replaced by The Force Awakens director J.J. Abrams. And though many at the time rested easy that the sequel was now in the hands of a reliable filmmaker, The Rise of Skywalker of course released to wildly mixed reception from fans and critics alike. To make matters worse, Trevorrow's original script for the film landed online and many fans felt that it was superior to what we ended up with. Now, Trevorrow's career has been just fine since though, as he's currently finishing up post-production on Jurassic World Dominion. And number one, Sky Captain and the World of Tomorrow flopped and got Kerry Conran fired from John Carter. By getting in tight with the right people, director Kerry Conran managed to secure a $70 million budget for his 2004 directorial debut, Sky Captain and the World of Tomorrow, a sci-fi action adventure starring Jude Law, Gwyneth Paltrow, and Angelina Jolie. Though generally well received by critics for its innovative, effects heavy filmmaking style, it tanked at the box office and almost immediately pumped the brakes on Conran's promising career. Now, he'd been in negotiations to direct John Carter of Mars, an adaptation of the book series, but allegedly once the opening weekend numbers for Sky Captain dropped, he was promptly given his marching papers. He eventually was replaced with John Favreau, though Paramount ultimately shelved the project for several years until it was picked up by Disney, who ended up making it under the shortened title 
Daniel John Carter with Pixar filmmaker Andrew Stanton. John Carter went on to grossly underperform at the box office and score wildly mixed reviews, though does enjoy a certain cult fandom today. As for the director, after failing to get several subsequent films off the ground, he decided to step away from Hollywood and work on his own projects. And there we go, my friends. Those were eight movies that got directors fired from other movies. I hope that you enjoyed that, and please let me know what you thought about it down in the comments section below. As always, I've been Jules. You can go follow me over on Twitter at RetroJ with a zero, or you can swing by Live and Let's Dice, where I do all of my board game content and Warhammer streaming and stuff like that. So if you're interested, then please go check it out. But before I go, I just want to say one thing. Hope you're treating yourself well, my friend. Hope that you are directing your own life in a responsible and healthy and happy way, because that is all I want for you, my friend. For you to go out there with love in your hearts and to feel good about yourself because you are a massive ledge and do not let anything or anyone else tell you otherwise, all right? Now go out there and smash it. As always, I've been Jules. You have been awesome. Never forget that, and I'll speak to you soon. Bye.